students, I have come here to welcome you to our university. Um, Keneo Joffrey Sandala, your head of department at the McKinney campus. Uh, for the sake of introduction, I just want to inform you that Tikreso University has got so many programs and one of the programs is what you chose and uh, I just want to thank you to have been accepted at our noble university. As you are very much aware, it is a Christian university. Uh, when you come to join us as a clinical officer, uh, we have two campuses. There is one which is in Indola, then the other one is here in Lusaka at the Makeni campus. These are the two campuses where you are going to find uh, this program for clinical officers. Now, um, on behalf of the Vice Chancellor, I want to echo again to welcome you uh, highly to our university and did for you to have chosen this precious uh, university. I can rest assure you that indeed your goals and whatever you want to do, uh, you are going to achieve that. Uh, the other point I should emphasize is that you need to also apply yourself because the school itself, uh, it is well prepared to receive you. It is well prepared to have you learn and achieve your goals which you want to achieve in your lives. So what is this thing I'm talking about? We have all the requirements, both human and the material resources which are needed for you to accomplish your program at this university. We have the lecturers, uh, well qualified, and they will take you through in all these courses which we are going to do, starting from the first year up to the last year. Oh, sorry for that. I, I mean, yes, it is going to, it is going to take you through starting from the first year up to the last year which you are going to have to be in this university. Now, coming to the course which you are going to take, uh, we have six courses. You are going to take six courses. And these six courses, each has got a lecture. But you may find that maybe one lecture may take you in two and another one may be in two but all in all you find that uh, most of them even as you progress on you find that there's one lecture for each each course what are these six uh, courses you are going to do uh, the six courses you are going to do are anatomy and physiology fundamentals of emergency medicine you are going to do biomedical sciences, you are going to do medical biochemistry, you are going to do a communication skills and the medical ethics, and also there is a medical social psychology. So what I just want to do is uh, for you to have a grip of these uh, courses I'm talking about, we'll go around so that you see how they are going to help you. These courses, they are basically uh, just the basis, the foundational courses for the program which you have chosen. They are going to help you to come and understand the medicine proper. They are going to help you to have a foundation, even at a time you still want to go and progress uh, to become a medical licensian, to become a doctor, to become a specialized person in the field of your own choice. These are the ones which will help you to understand even how diseases come about. These are the ones which will help you understand even how also the drugs come to work in the body. These are the ones which come and help you to understand 
even the prognosis, by prognosis we mean the way a patient gets sick, then along the way they start recovering. So you'll be able to know what is happening in the body. It is a situation whereby you may see a patient to look so critically and somebody outside there, they may say may die, but coming to you, you know that this patient somehow is stable because you understand what is happening inside there. But there could be situations again where somebody looks like he is stable, but for you, you'll be able to know even if this one looks stable, this one needs some urgent attention. Why? It's because you have got the basis which we are talking about. You have got the foundation knowledge about the diseases themselves. Therefore, uh, uh, fellow students, uh, I will just take you briefly uh, into these areas so that you can understand them well. Let's come to the medical social psychology. There are some diseases we see which can be affected by somebody who is culturally uh, affected, by somebody who is socially affected, or just something to do with the traditional issues. There are diseases of such nature whereby if these situations are not okay, for example, in the mental, mental cases, uh, diseases like diabetes, diseases like hypertension, you find that they need um, social psychological uh, environment which are quite sound for them. You, they need this to be a settled situation. Therefore, it's very important. For example, another one is somebody who has got maybe uh, some uh, high anxiety and they are not doing well. You need to know to say this, they need some counseling here and there for them to be okay. Therefore, medical social psychology is very important for you to know. Uh, the other one is how do you communicate to the patients? How do you communicate to your clients? Therefore, you need also to learn communication skills. You need to know also medical ethics because here in this field, the patient is always right. Sometimes they may behave in a way which will annoy you, but you should know that maybe it's not their fault, it's due to the disease which they have. Therefore, you don't react and then you go and insult or slap them back. You don't do that uh, because uh, these we consider them to be right. Therefore, the medical ethics about, about the, the way you approach this situation is there also. It will be taught to you. You are going to understand how you are supposed to handle your clients, how you are supposed to handle your, the, your, your patient so that there are no problems. Even if the patients are not cooperating, all those things are going to be taught to you so that you'll be able to do that. So when it comes to communication, they should know there is no way you are talking of one thing but your body is showing something else. You should be a person who is always smiling to your patients. You are a patient who is, you, 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 are, you, are, you are a professional who is able to, who is, who is able to Welcome everybody you are looking at. Uh, there are people who come because they have been believed. You don't just chase them out. You just come down and respect them, answer them well. The way you are talking, the way you are reacting, it's very important to the clients as well as the bedsiders. So you are going to be taught all these things which will be covered well in the communication skills as well as um, uh, medical ethics. So these are very, 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 very important. We shall also um, go to anatomy and physiology. We shall talk about the fame also. We'll show you one or two things there when we come to biomedical, even the medical uh, biochemistry. I will show you one or two things. Um, now let me talk about the progression. Uh, the progression from the first year first semester as we start like this is such that you go on to the next semester then the other one then the other one now what we should know is that from now onwards you will be able to be doing what we call continuous assessment these are small tests which you'll be writing after covering a, a, a good number of topics then you'll be given a test 
and then he will get the marks out of that and then sometimes again you'll be given assignments where you work in groups or individually and then you are going to be marked these tests together with the continuous assessment or group work sometimes are the ones where we get the marks all together and they build up to what we call continuous assessment and this comes up to 40 percent and then the 60 percent uh, that is out of the final paper you are going to write at the end of the semester that one carries 60 percent so now all these will be happening like that up to the time you are going to reach uh, second year, second semester. Uh, at second year, second semester, you'll be now introduced to what we call external examinations. We have internal or local examination and then external examination. So the external examination, this is an examination which comes from the a university of zambia this is the uh, the department of medicine it comes from the rich way we are talking about the department of medicine from user now these are the ones who provides and the monitor marks gives results and everything it comes from there as an external examination you will be people who have been prepared, very well prepared for that examination. That's why we have recorded a good pass rate all along because more the students, we make sure that they are prepared and then they come to pass that external examination. Once you've done the external examination, the next one year, you find yourself to be in the hospitals. We have various hospitals where we have the memorandum of understanding as your skills which you've been learning while you are doing the theory block. In the theory block, you find that there will be certain things you, the, which will be demonstrated to you on your maybe how to give injection, uh, maybe uh, how to operate, how to suture, how to incise an abscess, and all those, how, how, how to give birth, and all such things are going to be demonstrated to you while you are in the school. Then after that, when you have done the external examination, which we call intermediate examination, then you go into the hospital. In the hospitals there, you are going to go through all these things you would have been uh, learning. Then once you finish that one, you have just one month break, then you come back and then we shall have a revision both in, phys in, in practical as well as the theory before you could do write the final examination. And this final examination also is uh, administered by external examiners, and this is the UNSA, um, the, the, the UNSA paper which we are talking about even earlier. So, once you are done with that, then you are done with the, your course. So, like we are saying, that is how the progression is. But after your course, that's not the end of the world. You can still progress if you want. You can go and do specialties which are there for clinical officers. There are so many specialities which you can do, like the eye, the skin, a theater, and all that. These are the specialities which you can go out and do outside there. Then others would say, no, let me go a step ahead. You may do bachelor's in um, medical licensing. These are the people now you find that you are able to start running on your own a district hospital. Now, when you are running a district hospital, it means all the operations now were both in obstetric, gyne, surgery, and all such things. They are yours. You are going to start doing those things. And then others will go and specialize, just go and do uh, medicine there or just pediatrics and uh, it could be maybe also you may do I. You can still go for other specialties after doing that medicalization. The others will say, no, 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 I will not end up here. You may want to go and do doctorate. So if you want to become a doctor, yes, as a medical assistant, you also go for about two, well, about two to three years, you'd have finished your doctorate and you come out 
as a doctor. You don't end up there again. You can still go and specialize as a doctor. Maybe you become a surgeon, a gynecologist, and all that. So you can see that indeed, uh, this is just a stepping stone where you, you, you've come. And you need to remain focused for you to become and realize what you want to be in this life. So my brothers, my sisters, students, I encourage you just to be focused when you, uh, you start your exams. Uh, don't look at your friend. Uh, don't, there, there are others who want to perform just because their friends are doing fine. Then there are others that are very good, but just because the peer pressure where they are is not good, they just fall into that. But we do discourage to say, no, 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 don't do that. Just remember about your family. Remember about your parents, what they are putting in. They are putting in a lot of money and they know what you are, not, you are going to be in the future. And that's the thing which should give you some encouragement so that you'll be able to forge ahead. So at this time, again, I want to encourage you to say, even as you come, you need to come with a court. I, I, I know by this time you... So those are the things, uh, um, the, the court. The, the, the next one also is the stethoscope. I think you've seen uh, this. This is the stethoscope. You've seen with the clinicians having this one, a doctor, medical assistant, clinical officer, all these are clinicians. They always move with this. In the case of an emergency, in case a patient is sick, uh, you, they will be able to call you so that you attend to this one. Any emergency, as you approach any emergency, you are supposed to have your stethoscope because your stethoscope, it will tell you about this patient in terms of breathing. It will tell you about this patient in terms of the heart still working. Now, um, these are the only two uh, which I say that they are a must which you're supposed to have. And then uh, uh, let's come to the mode of learning. Uh, mode of learning here, I just want to tell you that there are just two. Uh, first and foremost is the current one because of this COVID uh, situation which is there. You find that we have the online uh, lectures which are going to be there. And these very soon, you find next week, we are going to start uh, having the lectures, uh, online lectures. And the, I just uh, want to encourage you also on this part to be so committed and make sure that your bundles and all that are ready so that you don't uh, miss out. And of course, at some point, you are going to be called so that you are going to come on the campus. This is another one which is now physical where we shall be interacting physically as we come to teaching or lecturing. So these are the two modes of uh, uh, lecturing which, which we do. Now, I mentioned earlier about the six courses and then I talked about the medical social psychology. I talked about the communication uh, skills and I left out the four. I think you can come with me so that uh, I, I show you what it is anatomy and the physiology I'm talking about. And then we go on to the next uh, three so that you understand them very well. So you can join me so that we check what this anatomy is. Okay, like I was saying, this is the section to do with the anatomy and the physiology. Uh, anatomy and the physiology is simply the biology which we are learning at the school. Now we are talking that biology which covers the human being. Anatomy is the structure of the body. Physiology is the functions of those structures or organs in the body. So now, when you come to learn about anatomy and the physiology, uh, you are going to, this is what we are calling anatomy. So this is a human being, and then a human being is it dissected? When you dissect a human being, we can look, we can see here. We can see the outside, the skin part of it, and then from there we go inside. Just after the skin, we have got the muscles. If we go to the head, the head also, here's the head, somebody has got the teeth, the mouth, 
But as you go inside, you find the tongue, you are going to find the eye and how it's connected to the brain. And then from there, you start seeing the blood vessels. And then from there, you see also the trachea. It will go on. If we try to open here, you end up seeing the lungs also. This is what we are saying. All these parts, this is the part for the, fe for the female also, as you can see the uterus there. This is the liver, which you can find somewhere here. And this is the kidney, which you find on the posterior or on the back of the, of the body. And here we can see a baby being formed. This is the baby which is being formed in the fetus. And that's the baby which is born. And this is what we call the placenta, which is attached uh, to the umbilical cord of the, of the baby. So this is also the uterus, and this is the placenta we are talking about, which is attached there to the uterus. And then it is here where the baby is supposed to be as the baby is growing. And this is the uh, uh, pregnant woman we are talking about. So this is what uh, we call as anatomy. What you have seen, is anatomy. It, all this is anatomy. But the function of the brain, how it functions, how the liver functions, how the kidney functions, that function in part of it is what we are calling as physiology. Now, these, as I said earlier on, are the bases or fundamentals which we need to understand before you go now to do your medicine proper. Uh, because there will be diseases of the liver, there will be diseases of the kidney, there will be diseases of the eyes, whichever part of the body, there will be those diseases. You would have known to say this disease it is affecting this part of the organ. And then when this organ is affected uh, by, by going with the physiology, then you will know what wrong things are happening and how it can affect other parts of the body. So those are the areas, even the drugs, the way they, they work, the way you come to the liver and how the liver comes to work on the drugs, then all this is going to be explained to you. And then once you, you know this, that's when you'll be ushered into medicine as you come to the first year, second semester, that's when you are going to start now going into the medicine proper. That's when you start going into the drugs and how they work and everything else until you come to complete uh, your course. So from here, let me, this is about anatomy and physiology. If you remember, I talked about fundamentals of emergency medicine. Let me just come and show you one or two things which you may do when it comes to that area. We can move together. Yes, you are welcome to another station where I just want to explain a bit uh, on the fundamental emergency medicine. Um, there we can get two important words here. There is fundamental and then there is emergence. So um, if these are very important basic uh, knowledge which we are supposed to have, basic skills which are supposed to have, basic attitudes which we are supposed to have so that we are able to handle issues in emergency situations also. And at the same time, we are able to monitor our patients, our clients. This is going to help us once we have this knowledge. Now, uh, one thing I want to talk about, which you may find yourself doing in the fundamentals of emergency medicine, there could be maybe an accident outside there, or something has happened in a house, uh, it could be on the road, and of course sometimes even in the hospital, there will be some images where you'll be required to come in and immediately uh, you apply your skills which you have so that you are going to salvage this person. Now, one of these things which you may do is that somebody has just collapsed and you've been told to say somebody has collapsed. So what are you going to do? You need to respond quickly to that call, leave whatever you are doing, because if you waste any, any minute 
that person is going to be dead. It's better you leave what you are doing because you can still find it and you go and save the life. That is how your life is going to be now. So now there, one of the things you are going to do if somebody has just collapsed, they say they are not breathing well and everything, is what we call... Um, uh, you're going to restart, resuscitate somebody where you start with the uh, pressing on the chest. So this, they go together. This is a resuscitation where you look at the heart and then you are going to look at the respiratory. How do you know that the heart is not working? You use a stethoscope, like I told you. You put it quickly there and listen where the, the heart is. How is the heart pumping? You can get it? Yes. Then you know to say somebody is alive, even if other things are not there. The other way you can know again is to touch and you feel the pulse. Then you would have known somebody is alive. In that case now, you are going to uh, go ahead and start doing the pressing on the chest. You press on the chest, press on the chest, and of course, check also the respiratory there. Then after a short time, you find somebody with even started breathing. It means now you have restarted, restarted this person, and then from there, most of the cases where if somebody is very unconscious, uh, you don't make them just lie like this because the tongue can go back and block the airway and somebody can suffocate. There is what you are going to be taught, the, a, 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 a position which is very safe. So the resting position, you have to bring somebody in that position so that they will be able to lie on the side only and the leg are going to be in the front. You throw them in the front there so that they will not go back like that. And then also the airway is going to be patent. It is going to be open so that one is able to breathe well. So that is where an emergence has come in. But also there are aspects of uh, maintaining the patients in the, in the hospital. There are those who may be there for a long time and you find that they don't do even exercises, they are just lying like that. When it is like that, what is needed is, is to make sure that every two hours these patients are turned to one position, another two hours to another position, another two hours why is it done so? It is done so because if one is pressed in one area like that more than two hours or so, there are certain uh, parts of the body which are prominent, they will end up being pressed too much for some time and then ulcers are going to develop. You'll be told on how ulcers develop and what is, what is happening and all that. But here I just wanted you to know to say if somebody is sleeping for more than uh, two hours in that position, same position, there is a tendency of developing ulcers. So you have to be turning, that is the missing aspect of it. Not only that, the other thing is that if the legs and the limbs are not moving, you find that they will be atrophied, they start becoming small, and then uh, there will be other diseases which can come in. What do you do? You start uh, giving them exercises. You massage them. You give them exercise, you massage them, just like that. So all these things, even the, the temperatures, the BPs and all that, all these things uh, are going to be taught as you do the fundamentals of uh, uh, emergence medicine. There is a lot you are going to cover in there. That's why at the end of the day, if you go outside and they start demonstrating, even your parents will be pleased to see that you are able to do uh, all these things because you have chosen a good career. Now from here, uh, we are going to do the last one, uh, which we talked about the uh, biomedical uh, chemistry. We are talking about biomedical uh, sciences. All, all those are now to do with the lab. You are talking about uh, the viruses, you are talking about uh, the bacteria, you are talking about the uh, parasites, you are talking about the immunity of someone. Uh, all these are covered in the uh, water we are just going to cover, but uh, all this is done in the other uh, laboratory. This is a skills laboratory as you perform your nursing and the other clinical work. And then now when it comes to, to the lab, this is the area where you are going to uh, uh, be sending your specimens uh, for investigation, the tests. 
and then from there they will give you the results and which will help you to understand the pattern of that disease or what is happening in the body. So we can move and then we go to the uh, basic laboratory where we'll go and see the microscopes and other things which you are going to be using.